Some skeptics call Christians bibliologers, and this charge is unfortunately sometimes true, but it leads us to one of the biggest reasons why we don't have inerrant copies of Scripture today. Simply put, they're not necessary, and nor for that matter is an inerrant original. It's plain that neither the Bible nor a belief in inerrancy is required to be a Christian. If this were so, then former skeptics like Frank Morrison or C.S. Lewis, who believed in the historicity of the resurrection but not in the inerrancy of the gospel reports of it, would never have become Christians. People behind the iron and bamboo curtains would never have become Christians in times when the Bible was forbidden in those countries, and they often had no more than a few pitiable verses handwritten on a paper towel. Finally, in this day beyond when most people cannot even remember what their name is without consulting their driver's license, literacy would be a prerequisite for belief, which would be absurd being that the Bible was written in a time when up to 95% of the given population was illiterate. So the charge of bibliolatry, while often, unfortunately, sometimes true or appearing to be so, is nevertheless not a true representation of Christian belief. Moreover, given the circumstances, it is clear that the Word of God for most people was not what was written on paper, but was the original idea, what I have called the home office copy, recorded on paper. Few of the Christians who lived in history could have appreciated the significance of a written and errant original document. That's one practical reason why we don't have or need inerrant copies, but there's an even bigger reason that can be detected from the evidence of history. We'll look at that next time.